What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing, we're going to be fixing one of the biggest problems that the 6.7 Power Stroke has. Very common failure point and it's under this hood. But first guys, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up. Drop your comments down below guys. We have plenty of 6.7 content coming out. So now here we are under the hood. We don't need very many tools at all. In fact, we just need one socket and a screwdriver. This is your cold side pipe. We're gonna be replacing that today. For some reason, Ford still hasn't learned that the plastic pipes break and it's kind of a pain in the butt and it happens at a lot of inconvenient times. Say towing, I don't know, 10,000, 13,000 pounds. Happens to a lot of guys while they're towing and nothing will make me more upset besides maybe the baby fuel tank that came on this thing that we're gonna fix that in the future too. But nothing would make me more upset than this pipe blowing while I'm driving, especially towing when I'm out of town. I go to New York a lot. And if that pipe breaks, I now have a bad day and I get to hear it from my Duramax friends in New York about why I should have brought Duramax instead of a 6.7. So before all that can happen, we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna tell you right here, guys, super easy project. There's an 11 millimeter T-bolt clamp right here. And there's one right down here you're gonna need this contraption to do it. And basically I'm getting to it from here. It's already broken loose though. And again, that's 11 millimeter. So for those of you guys that don't know, we're gonna go over how this all works. The turbo is hidden under that giant plastic nonsense there. It comes out here. This is, so this is your hot side pipe. This guy here is your intercooler right there and then from down below it comes out this is your cold side pipe and as you can see this is filthy this is actually <laughs> really dirty so we're going to get this guy out of here now now once you get these two loose you can actually take this lower part out a while but what we are doing is we are hitting this quick disconnect first and all you do is find one of the ends and pop it out. Now, if I had to guess, I would say I'm probably losing a little bit of boost on this. So basically, all I did was pop it out of place and set it to the side. And then we can do that the rest of the way around. And then out she comes. Now, as you pull this out, now as you pull this out, you have a sensor right here. So we are gonna pop this out. Ow. And we'll go over getting this out and then the new one in just a little bit. All right, so one thing we want to do here is make sure we clean up all of the mating surfaces. So just take a rag or something, clean these guys up the best you can. Now the big thing here is that we don't have oil residue on this. This does have a crankcase vent system that vents into your intake. And when you have, so when you have a intercooler boot, it can blow off. I don't think that'll be much of an issue here. It's a nice heavy duty kit. It comes with all brand new hardware. The only part I had to go purchase was I had to get a new O-ring for this piece here that goes, I'll show you that adapter in a little bit. Other than that, it comes with all new T-bolt clamps, big heavy duty couplers, and a metal pipe. So we're gonna head over here. We're gonna check out this new piece and uh, start getting it ready. Okay, so here it is. This new intercooler pipe is actually from Diesel and Automotive. So we got, this is the lower coupler here. So this goes on at the intercooler. This is the upper one. We got these bands around here so this boot doesn't blow out. This big heavy duty billet piece. So this connects into right by the throttle body. The O-ring, 
I got sits right in this groove here. Now you can reuse the factory one. I just got a brand new factory one instead. Four T-bolt clamps. Here's the new quick disconnect piece that goes in here. So when that this clicks, pushes onto the rest of it, it just clicks in and holds it there. And of course, the pipe itself. So this piece here, this is where the sensor goes in. That part goes up top. Up top, you couldn't see it, sorry. So now here is the sensor. What you have to do is there's a little knob, nub here that keeps it there. You have to pull up and turn it, and then she comes right out. So there is an O-ring here. You wanna make sure it's intact and in good shape, ours is. And now, as you can tell here, I think this is coming up. This fits in a very certain way, and then as you turn it is what locks it in place. All right, and there it is lined up. Now you can see it right in there, so you'll, or see, and it's not showing up. You can see it in there, in real life anyway, and as it, you'll see the tabs lock into place so you know it's not coming out. Next thing is we have an O-ring here. So this guy looks like it's just over a three inch O-ring. It's relatively thick diameter. So then you just take your O-ring here. Pop it into place. Okay, and as you push it in, it, there's gonna be a little wrestling. It's gonna seem bigger. For a second I thought I had the wrong size, but you keep working it in and you'll get it in there a little at a time. Uh, so if it seems bigger than it needs to be, it's not. You just gotta keep messing with it. It'll seat in there perfectly, just like that. While this may be the kit that I got, guys, this is very similar to a lot of other kits. So a lot of this is going to work on other models as well. So if you're local, I recommend Diesel and Automotive. But if you're not, there's a lot of other high quality kits. I'll recommend the ones that I considered purchasing. So this video will work for most of these other ones out there as well. Now next we have a new clip here. So what you do, you pop this on here. So to get this on here, you just take it and start working it around, open it up, and then you find your little grooves and it clicks in. Now when you're putting this in, you don't have to actually have it out. You can, it'll click into it. So you just set them up. Just make sure that when you're doing it, the tabs that are up here so you can pull it out. So you would basically pick it up and set it to the side on each side. You want to make sure that they're facing up or at least easily accessible up. You don't want them all the way down to be a big pain in the butt to get to. Now all of our new clamps all take 11 millimeter and they're all the same size. So we're going to put this on a while to help line the, our thing up here. I don't know if you heard that it did click into place guys i have my clamps on here a while all right so it's time to start getting this back on here and basically you're going to want to eyeball your outlet there and how this is going to go so this isn't going to be perfectly up and down because it goes at a angle here so we're going to loosely eye this up here So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this boot down below a while and I'm going to actually tighten it down. And I'm going to orient the clamp like this. That's how the factory one was. It was super easy to get to and around this coolant line. So that's how we're going to do it. All right, guys, Josh stopped over to hang out and I conned him into working. It's quite easy. If you bring beer or have beer and you start working on stuff, he will he will come finish it. Anyway, uh, in all seriousness, he has given me a big hand here. He helped me line all these boots up. It was a little bit of a project there. So we're putting the clamps on now. Just kind of this top boot here, or the top part of the boot here, 
that's going to be uncomfortable to get. It was hard to get it all lined up easily, so we're going to get it put on now. But I need to do it the old way with just a wrench. We did have to take this uh, power steering reservoir off. It's just one bolt. Move it to the side to get it all in. All right, guys, we are losing daylight here soon. So here it is. Here's the finished product. I'm going to make some small changes, but I, like I said, it's getting late, and I just wanted to make sure it's all done. We're going to take it for a test drive here in a little bit. I was hopeful to get my fuel filters changed tonight. There's one there. There's one underneath, but that's not happening. I'm calling it quits. We'll do that first thing in the morning before the fifth wheel rails. Josh, what do you think? We'll see you in the next. I really hate him sometimes. I don't know why I ask him anything. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, guys, very tight fit here on this one, and I think a lot of them are the same. There's not a ton of room in this engine bay to do anything at all. It's really tight, but it fit nice. It took a little bit of wrestling it in there, but I do think it looks nice. Something really goofy that I'll probably change in the next day or two is making both of these clamps face the same way. But while I was have while we were having a little bit of a hard time getting it, and I wasn't messing with that, so that's probably something I'll take care of later. We weren't having a difficult time. Josh and I are having a little bit of a hard time getting this in. <laughs> but nice kit here, guys. Like I said, this came from Diesel and Automotive. So if you're local and you want to get it, hit him up. If not, I will have affiliate links to other good products. I like it. I think it's pretty pretty solid. It's pretty product. cool piece. I, I it. I mean, how fancy can you make it? Like, I, don't, <laughs> so, I, don't think, I don't think you can make it any fancier. And you, we weren't looking for fancy here, guys. If you're this getting was rid of the plastic. If you're getting rid of the plastic and you want something metal, I think this is a pretty solid kit. It's, yeah. It, yeah. Jared's right. You gotta you gotta make sure the angles are right. But it doesn't matter what kit you would get. You would have to do that. So I don't know who makes it. Whoever you got it from, but it, I I think it's a pretty solid kit. But it seems really nice all in all. At some point we need to clean this engine bay up because it looks bad. It looks really rough. It is dirty. Oh, it's filthy. You should it's do awful. something about it. It's, in the, it's on the to-do list. It'll happen. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Even though I'm going to have to put up with a bunch of crap from Josh like immediately after I close this, if not in the background right now, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up. Drop those comments down below, guys. I'll see you in the next upload.